Whatever you're wearing right now, Mack Weldon is better. Mack Weldon is a men's essentials brand that believes in smart design, premium fabrics, and simple shopping. They even have a line of silver underwear and shirts that are naturally antimicrobial, which means they eliminate odor. They want you to be comfortable, so if you don't like your first pair, you can keep it and they will still refund you, no questions asked. Go to MacWeldon.com and get 20% off using promo code PFT. That's MacWeldon.com, 20% off using promo code PFT. The future is coming. Make it brighter with Squarespace. Squarespace makes it easy to turn your idea into a unique website. Showcase your work, blog, or publish content, even sell products and services of all kinds in just a few clicks. You can customize anything from look and feel to settings and products using beautiful templates created by world-class designers. And there's nothing to install, patch, or upgrade ever. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code PFT to save 10% off your first purchase of a website website or domain. My friend, the dog, is actually a hog. Check. There we go. Now, I am ready to talk to you. <laughs> That's right. My friend, the dog is actually a hog. Are there still people who are providing the job of an Henry Iggins? <laughs> Who are teaching Cockney women to say rhymes right? You know, I don't know everything about England. I do know it's a scepter dial. I don't know what that means. I don't... I don't know what sceptered means, and I've only heard it in reference to the one island. Is this something that Professor Henry is going to tell me out? Who's the American equivalent of Professor Henry Higgins? Mr. Blackwell? <laughs> is he still alive? He might not be. But I'm... <laughs> Someone is shaking their head. No. Mr. Blackwell jamming with that rock and roll band in the sky. <laughs> Mr. Black, if you don't know who Mr. Blackwell was, he was very important. He was a man who decided, no one asked him to do this, but he decided to put out a best and worst dressed list every year. Now, the best dressed, no one gave a shit. <laughs> All anyone cared about was the worst dressed list because uh, meow, he got catty. He would talk about people's outfits in a in a damning way he would say like uh i don't know fanny flag looks like uh a fruit fly uh threw up on uh some dog food <laughs> you know witty <laughs> now that's how everybody is everything is Everything is snarky all the time. Guys, what happened to us? We all became Mr. Blackwell? Well, we all will die. Hmm. I guess I never thought about it that way before. Aren't we all Mr. Blackwell in that we are mortal? What if Mr. Blackwell returns from the dead and he is the Messiah? Oh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Spontaneous Nation with Paul F. Tompkins. I am the second part. This is a show where I invite a special guest onto the program to have a free-form conversation with me, inspired by a blind question from our previous episode's guest. When LeVar Burton was on the program, and I mentioned before we recorded that it was a blind question, he said, is that a Star Trek reference? <laughs> I felt bad that that did not make it to air, and now I share it with you. <laughs> 
Then I invite some improviser pals onto the show to join me in a narrative improv that is one continuous story as opposed to one connected scenes, oftentimes utilizing details gleaned from the conversation with the aforementioned special guest. And it is all scored on piano <laughs> by Mr. Eben Schletter. That's what he goes like. Ladies and gentlemen, I am very excited to welcome this fellow back to the program. We have the last time he was on the show, we weren't in the studio. We were in a live setting. And that show began by me falling off the stage. It's the only time I've done that so far as of this recording. <laughs> but he is back and he is here in Hello. anticipation of his fantastical podcast that is coming back for a second season. Holy shit! And I believe it's, as of this, as people are hearing this, it's available now. Oh, sure it is. We're in March now. We are? Right? Yeah. It's great to be here in March. It's roaring in like uh, a lion. Uh, I'll see. Uh, yeah! It is called the Andy Daly Andy Podcast Daly. Pilot Project. You got it right, right? I don't know. Did you get it right? Yes, podcast. I did. Pilot. Podcast and his pilot. name goes Andrew Andy Daly. Ha <laughs> ha! That is me! Andy, welcome back to <laughs> the show. It's great to be here. Yes, the last time I was on this show, I caught some heat for allowing you to fall <laughs> off the stage. <laughs> and for... <laughs> Protecting my Diet Coke above that's, all, that's and right. for leaving the scene. It was of a minor accident. It was a great bit. It was a great bit. It was, I was falling backwards, and he immediately ran away, <laughs> cradling his Diet Coke like it was the Christ child. Um, but of course, uh, everything was fine. No one got hurt. As I knew when I, uh, when exactly. I saw you begin your fall, exactly. I said, This is going to end fine. I can do a bit. <laughs> We, listen, I know what's back there. This is this is the type of people we are. We're always looking for opportunity. Is it okay to do a bit here? Sure. Is is this looks like a situation going wrong? But right. yes, is it going so wrong I can't do a bit? Right. Or is it going just wrong enough that a bit is welcome? And the answer is always the the later thing. <laughs> always do a bit. <laughs> always be doing a bit. <sighs> a always B. B B D doing A B D. A. Now it stands for A. a oh, B. A, a, now B, a. that stands for bit. A B D A B A B D A B. That's right. Ab a cab. <laughs> now, yeah. Andy, Andy, fl let's fucking talk Fuck about and talk about. <laughs> Come on, the uh, your your podcast, the Andy Daly Podcast Pilot Project. You really got to think about it before. Yeah, you, say you do. It. Yeah, it's That's hard. A terrible name. It's worth it though. I think so. By the time you get to the end of it, you have a sense of satisfaction. I like to hear somebody else say it. That's what's enjoyable. Oh, here we go. Andy Daly Pizza Party Part. Pizza Party Part? <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. I really thought I was going to say it. Now, this for people who don't know, this is uh, the, the conceit is mm. you are mm. collecting mm. a bunch of podcast pilots. Yes. That various people have made. That have been submitted, fully produced to the offices of Earwolf. That's right. Uh, for consideration as full-scale uh, podcasts, regular podcasts. These are pilots that have been produced. And uh, yeah, we collect them and listen to them, screen them, and then we give them an, a fair public airing. And I, I think it's fair to say mm -hmm. that the people making these podcasts, well, mm -hmm. <laughs> they're weirdos. <laughs> Couple of screws loose at least. <laughs> I'll say, yeah, uh, yeah. All of them uh, to a person are nuts in one way or another, and I would say mostly murderers. <laughs> if you are in any doubt, worry not, dear listener. Um, and these are these are uh, characters that uh, you are doing, and then you invite uh, other people. I got to do a few episodes yes. uh, with you. It was very exciting. Oh. Um, and I, you're doing a couple characters that you had done before. Yes. But mm. some brand new people as well. That's true. Season two involves, I forget the numbers, but roughly half and <laughs> half. <laughs> There's eight of them all together. And I think I think half of them are uh, characters who we heard from in the first season of mm. the uh, whatever this show is called. And the other <laughs> half would be characters who have never before produced a pilot for their own podcast. There we go. And uh, uh, all but one of them... Uh, all but one of those, uh, all but one of the characters first premiered on Comedy Bang Bang, the podcast. Who was the one who didn't? L. Ron Hubbard, who made his premiere on the Dead Authors podcast, yeah! with which you may be somewhat familiar. 
Uh, well, I'm very excited, and that that will be uh, that is for free on your wolf, right? No, it's a premium. It's gone behind the paywall. <laughs> <laughs> so we're talking Stitch Preems. Uh, Stitch Preems. R.I.P. My mentions. <laughs> It is going. <laughs> Stitcher <laughs> Premium. Stitcher but look, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's so much good stuff on Stitcher there Premium. There is. You know what? I didn't have a Stitcher Premium account at all until they were like, you want know this should go on Stitcher. And I was like, what is it? And now I've signed up for one and I have no regrets. Yeah. I'm digging it, man. I uh, I pay for a Stitcher Premium subscription uh-huh. and I listen to it a lot. There's a lot of great shows on there. Yeah, there Teacher's are. Lounge. Look, uh, I, I'm not going to bore you with the details. <laughs> all you need to know is... <laughs> The A D Triple P is on there, pow, 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 pow. and it's going to be great. The first season yeah. um, was hilarious, and I'm so looking forward to hearing all episodes of the second season. Yes, we've been having great fun making these episodes here in the month of March. Uh, <laughs> uh, what else? You know, it, it, it has been four years. No. Yes. Really? Funny enough, the, the one of the episodes, one of the characters, uh, I'll go ahead and say – Dalton Wilcox makes <laughs> frequent mention of the fact that it's been three years since he did his podcast pilot, which is because that's how long I thought it was. And then later it was pointed out to me, no, it's been four. Wow. <laughs> so I was wrong and therefore he was wrong. Time flies. I remember very vividly being uh, on stage at Molly Malone's yeah. <laughs> doing Kiss Me on Patrick and Man Live. Oh. Andy, I have a question for you. Oh, fine. This comes to us from our previous episode's guest. Yes. And that question is this. Oh, dear me. What is a place that gives you immediate joy? Oh. What a nice question. Usually they're not nice. Oh, no? <laughs> a place that gives me immediate joy? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's hard not to just say my bed. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean it's delightful to just lie down in my bed and take a take a few minutes or a, or a full six hours, which is about as much as I can hope for these days. Because you got the kids, you got the kids. Well, I have a wife that's like this. Yes, that loves bed, loves love to get it. into bed. I love to look, lie down. I I like our bed. Yeah. We have a nice bed. Yeah. But I don't. Th- I feel like I don't think about it the same way that she thinks about it. Uh huh. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like when it's time to go to bed. I'm like, oh, this is nice. Uh-huh. <laughs> but I, I feel like I'm not thinking about it. Like, I sometimes feel like my wife is marking time until she can get in the bed. Oh, no, I'm not. No, I have a hard time getting into bed for mm-hmm. the night's sleep. This is a thing. I have I, somebody, I heard the phrase sleep procrastination. I was like, that's me. I have that. But several times throughout the day, I think to myself, you know, it'd be nice just to lie down in that bed for a few minutes. <laughs> Just just a few minutes. I never – I'm tired all the time. I yeah. never think that. Oh, really? Yeah. I do. I take some breaks. I lie down. I put my head on the pillow. Got a favorite pillow. I got a pillow that's been with me <laughs> since, Wait a minute. Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. Actually, I wish you could see this pillow <laughs> now that I'm about to tell you about it. When, when I was in the second grade uh, – our house acquired a new bedroom. My parents added on to it so that <laughs> sure. my brother and I could have our own rooms. And he's two and a mm-hmm. half years older than me, and he really wanted his own room, and I did not. I did not want my own room. Why? Because were, I you enjoyed, were afraid? Yeah, I was afraid. I was younger. I was, mm-hmm. yeah, I was. And and uh, they did everything to make it worth my while. <laughs> they, they let me choose my own wallpaper. I chose funny cartoon characters and airplanes. And uh, Wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Were these two patterns of wallpaper, or this was a, a wallpaper that featured funny carco- cartoon characters and airplanes? It was four walls of uh, silly cartoon characters doing silly things in airplanes. Are these brand name cartoon characters? They are characters? not. They are just little <laughs> illustrations of funny fellows falling out of airplanes, walking on the wing, flying upside down. <laughs> This is some off-brand cartoon <laughs> character. Yeah, All right. available at the wallpaper store. <laughs> and I was so upset about having my own room that my mother gave me a pillow that she told me was special to her to sort of help me uh, do better. Uh, and this, and I have it to this day. It went to college with me. It has traveled everywhere with me. And uh, it is in no way a pillow. It's just flat as a pancake, it's, right? It's. I don't even know how to describe it. It's there, a pillowcase. <laughs> There is a pillowcase around another pillowcase that has a zipper is essentially what we're dealing with at this point. And there does seem to be a pile of some matter somewhere gathered in the, in the, and, and, but, and, but I, I put that, uh, 
You do you sleep on that? Uh, what I do. <laughs> <laughs> I no, uh, <laughs> bedtime, sleepy times. Sure. I will. I'll sort of like. Uh, I guess I'm snuggling it. To be honest with you, uh-huh. <laughs> I can't believe I'm talking. There, but there that, is nothing wrong with that. By the sure, way, sure, okay, thank nothing you. Nothing wrong with it's that. It's like a teddy bear, except that it is a. How old was I then? It's a forty year old. It's at least a forty year old <laughs> pile of whatever it is, pile of fabric. And then, but when I'm gonna lie down just for a few minutes in my bed, mm-hmm. I'll. I'll just put I put it behind my head, and it props my head up just the right amount off the pillow that I sleep on. Just as much as a rolled-up newspaper would. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Now, my, my wife went to uh, Edinburgh the same uh, yeah, time Yeah, we were you both were there. in Edinburgh, yes. Um, and so, so that's, a, that's the longest we have been apart ah, yeah. since we have been together. A full month. A full month. Yeah. And while she was gone, mm-hmm. I – we don't – I know some people are – like they have to be cuddling, snuggling when they go to bed. Yeah. My wife and I are like separate corners. Yeah. It's yeah. fine. Sure. You know, we, we look, we visit each other in the bed. <laughs> <laughs> but when, when it's time to sleep, it's like, we don't have to be touching each other. This is fine. Of course. Yes. But when she was gone, mm-hmm. I would just like kind of hold on to a pillow. Yeah. And it was extremely comforting. Yeah, right? Extremely comforting. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Yeah. It was really nice. They sell specific pillows that are designed for that, I think. I don't like that. That's though. weird. But though, they, look right? weird. <laughs> they, they look weird. And they look weird. They, they yeah. look, they're weird. They're, they're for weirdos. Uh-huh. <laughs> They've got a face, real human hair, teeth. But now, so, what, now, I, b- 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 forgive me for presuming. Yes. You and your wife share a bed? <laughs> yes, that's right. Yes. That is you don't have the presume. twin beds? No, we don't have the Brady Bunch style <laughs> twin beds. Were they? Were they? No, they had they had a bed. They had a bed. Right, right, right. I'm thinking of I Love Lucy. I guess I Love Lucy. Uh, Dick Van Dyke show. Mm-hmm. Separate beds. Separate beds. That is weird. It My, is weird. Mike Pence and his wife. <laughs> <laughs> if you're gonna do that, mm-hmm. you might as well go the full Downton Abbey route and have separate bedrooms. You might as well. Although I I don't know. Were the separate beds in one room an actual thing or just a convention for television? I think it might have been a little of both. Yeah. I think there I think the norm is people sleep in one bed. Yes. But that um there are some outliers uh-huh. who sleep in separate beds. <laughs> um because there I because the idea of pushing the beds together is a a, oh, a reference. Right. But I don't think it's just born out of TV. Okay. Um weird. It's it's weird. Yeah. Did you ever see the movie Sex in the City 2? <laughs> I'm offended by the question. I have I have somehow seen that movie twice. <laughs> what? Yes. What? Yeah. And How did that happen? Well, one time was for a podcast. Oh, yeah. The other time, I can't tell you why. I just <laughs> knew that I had seen it. Sometimes it's just easier on the brain to watch something you've seen before. You know what I mean? I might have been watching it with my wife. Okay. She might have wanted to watch it. She's All a big right. fan. Mm-hmm. Um, but in that bed, uh, the second time I saw it, a detail I had not noticed before, mm. is that these rich... People in New York, yeah. in Manhattan, mm-hmm. Mr. Big and Carrie. Okay. They're married? They're married in this movie. Oh. We see them living together. Mm. They share a bed. It's like a twin bed. Oh, <laughs> that interesting. It's fucking crazy. <laughs> she has, she has a, they have another separate apartment that she uses as her office uh, when she feels like it. Uh-huh. She, of course, has an insane shoe closet. Sure. But they're sleeping in this tiny, not even a queen bed. I wonder why that was done. I mean, is that like a nod to like, hey, man, that's how it is in New York. (laughs) New York, you know, even the rich. But ever since I noticed that, I've noticed it in other things where people are like, nobody would sleep in a bed that small. (laughs) Two people would not sleep in a bed that small. That's really strange. It's hilarious. I wonder. You know what? Maybe it was just a practical thing of getting cameras into the room. I. That's all I could figure. You know, so they shot it on a, on a, in a location, actual apartment. Let's, Let's break down the numbers because <laughs> you're not going to build the set on a stage. You know what? Are you going to add silver cup? You're going to find an apartment. <laughs> <laughs> what was the place that gave you joy as a child? Oh, well, we had some woods by our house, mm-hmm. uh, which sounds very quaint, and and it is. And I, when I went back to my tenth high school reunion, I was like, you know, I'm going to go back and see if those woods they've got to be gone, surely, because they were. It was it was woods next to an elementary school, which just seems like a bad idea, right? <laughs> 
Why have a place with full of foliage to hide in next to an elementary school? It's like surely in the intervening years, somebody would have wised up and mowed down all those trees, which I don't think belong to anybody. But I went back and it was exactly the same. Wow. As I remembered it as a child with the same like drainage ditch running through the middle of this <laughs> free growing forest. Uh, and so that was, that was the greatest place on earth. What? You could go to those woods and play anything. Right. You know, you, we played a lot of um, uh, King Kong, 1977, <laughs> in that uh, forest. What would be a typical game of King Kong, 1977? <laughs> <laughs> well, as I say, there was a drainage ditch. Sure. And you remember that scene in King Kong where they have to make it across this. There's a log. There's a tree that has fallen down over a giant kind of uh, crevasse. Right. And uh, they got to make it across. And as I recall, the last time I saw that movie, there is one particular spot on the log there's actually like a little – there's a, like a square drawn or painted on the log, and it is the point where more than one person stumbles like they're going to fall. <laughs> I don't know what that means. But it's just visible. Yeah, it's visible. Wait, wait, wait. This is the log in the movie. <laughs> yeah, in the movie, in the movie, in the movie. <laughs> like they didn't bother to take the tape up. No, they're like, this is the mark. I want you to stumble here because that, that's the perfect place to stumble because we feel like you're almost there, but not so far. You, you couldn't jump the rest of the way. Perfect place to stumble. I'll mark it off. And nobody, who's if they're looking at the mark on the log, we're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> now, this reminds me, this reminds me of your father. <laughs> your favorite story. My of mine. Fa- oh, I yeah. love it so much. Yeah. Your father, you had told me that your father, can he just can't sit through a whole movie, right? Yeah, I don't recall him ever sitting through a whole one. And so he's always looking, he just needs an excuse <laughs> so he can get out of there. <laughs> Like to, and it needs to be a thing where it's like, well, this movie isn't worth watching because of this. Yes. And yeah. Therefore, I will get up and do whatever, whatever I want to do. I don't know what else he's doing. But no, it's just a restless person. But no one would have stopped him, right? It's not no, like- no. You didn't need a reason. Just say, ah, yeah. Just get him go. But this was, I was in high school and it was just going to be he and I home on a Friday night or whatever. And I think oh, just the two he was just the two of us. And I think he told me like, hey, you want to rent a movie or something like that? And I was like, yeah, I'll rent a movie. I'll go down to the, the video store and I'm walking around and, and I thought, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to rent my favorite movie. And I think my dad will like it because it's funny and it's got a great story and it's it's just so much in this movie. I rented the movie Midnight Run mm-hmm. with Robert De Niro and uh, Charles Grodin and I brought her home and I thought, I think he's really going to enjoy this. And <laughs> I think... 10 or 15 minutes into the movie, Mm -hmm. there's a little thing that happens where uh, De Niro, the bounty hunter, is trying to track down uh, Charles Grodin. And something happens where, uh, I wish I could remember, he listens in on a phone call (laughs) from a car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he is able to hear the number that somebody is dialing in their home. Beep, boop, boop, beep, boop, boop, boop. And then he is able to somehow hold two devices up together and determine what the phone number is that was called based on the sound of the tones, something like that. <laughs> and we're watching it, and my dad goes, there's no such device. And he gets up, and he walks out of the room. <laughs> that was it. There's no such device. <laughs> He had seen quite enough. Oh, I had never Uh, seen that movie. Yeah. Until after you told me that story. Oh, really? (laughs) And I was like, I got to, because it's just this, it's a movie that's very well regarded and I'd never seen it. And finally watched it and I loved it. But man, I, I howled when that happened. (laughs) Oh, it was so much fun because I think I kind of forgot that it was coming. And Uh I was like, oh my God, it's the device. (laughs) My mother loved that movie, but she also hated swearing. Oh. And her 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 great white whale for many years was a clean version of Midnight Run. She wanted like the version that would have been on TV. Oh, well, it must exist. She couldn't find it. She couldn't find There's it. There's no such videotape. <laughs> Andy Daly, thank you for being here. Thank you. What a treat. Uh, the Andy Daly Podcast Pilot Project. It's out right now. Is that correct? If it's March, yeah. Do you- <laughs> <laughs> I think that it is. All right. I think that, I like to believe that it is. I feel in my heart that it's March. I keep marching my heart all year round. Check it out, Stu, as we are advised to do. <laughs> By the Surgeon General. Check out Andy's podcast uh, on Stitcher Premium. Sign up for Stitcher Premium. You can probably get a month free with the offer code SPONT. Whatever. Try it. See if yeah. it works. 
We will be back with more Andy Daly, and we'll say hello to somebody else. Stay alive no matter what occurs. I will find you. Guess who's supporting today's show? No. What? The Koch brothers? Weird. Support for today's show comes from Squarespace. They're nice. Are you ready to start your new business? Am I catching you off guard? We were all going to start new businesses today. Are you ready? (laughs) If you, hey, make it stand out with Squarespace. Squarespace has beautiful templates created by world-class designers. They make it easy to turn your idea into a new and unique website. Not hard. Squarespace is not pranksters. They're not Loki, the god of mischief trying to get in your dang way. Showcase your work, blog, or publish content. Even sell products and services of all kinds in just a few clicks. Don't call it dumb unless you've been there. You can customize everything from look and feel to settings and products. And it is all optimized for mobile right out of the box. Right out of the box. So that means, you know, it's not going to look like garbage on your phone, even though it looks nice on the laptop. Okay? Shut up. Use Squarespace's analytics to help you grow in real time. Well, your business, not you personally. This is not an anti-shrink ray. There is nothing to install, patch, or upgrade ever. That is the best possible world to live in. In which to live? Though if you do have a question, let's say you can't figure something out. It's not Squarespace's fault. It's yours. Squarespace is still willing to help you even though you disgust them. I'm not speaking for Squarespace. That I'm assuming. I would be disgusted. That's why I don't work for Squarespace. <laughs> if you do have a question, their award-winning 24-7 customer support is there to help. Unlike me, I will not help you. Destiny is calling. It says you need a new website. Make it with Squarespace. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code PFT to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That is squarespace.com, offer code PFT. Welcome back to Spontaneous Nation. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to meet our friends from the world of Make Pretense. This guy, he's sitting kitty corner for me. Meow. <laughs> he's like a kitty cat that came to life. <laughs> came to life. <laughs> Imagine if cats existed. Wouldn't that be weird? They were just like walking around. He's been on the show so many times. And what a joy and a treat and a pleasure to have him back. Matt Gorley is here! Hi, guys. Hi, honey! I was listening on, on everything. What? And it's he was great here the to whole be time. here. Yeah. I was. Mm-hmm. Now, Matt, yeah. you are like a little elf assisting Andy Daly. I am. With the Andy Daly podcast. Like his Tonto or his Dr. Watson or his short round. <laughs> short round. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's go with short round. I'm your short round. You tell people uh, when there's no time for love. Uh, Dr. Jones. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And you call him doll. And also, no more parachutes. <laughs> None taken. Okay. Now, do you also tell people when it is time for love? Oh, yes. Something Short Round never did in the movie. All well, the time. They never got around to it or was edited <laughs> out, but let me tell you, that's what he grew into. Now, will you be playing some old and new favorites on that's this right. season? You're right on both counts. Yes. Thank yes. you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I think we're bringing back. Should, I mean, I don't know how much should we reveal. If it's March, reveal it all. That's okay. <laughs> God. <laughs> well, I it's mean, so strange that they're some... questioning what month it is all the time. Eager. <laughs> People don't do that. Some Mal Backman. Mal Geiger? Backman. Oh, sure. Back. Uh, the Journeymen are back. Yeah. The German rock band Spirit will be back. Mm-hmm. Boy. A new band. It'll, it, I mean, just Very listen. Uh, this is worth Stitcher Premium alone. Yes, it is. And look, yeah. If it makes any difference, not to not to toot my own horn, do it. Russell Shine will be back. That's right. <laughs> Everyone's Werner favorite publisher, Werner right? Herzog will be back. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. And there's a new guy yeah. that I got to do. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, part of uh, Cameron McKenzie's Cameron McGonagall's terrifying Cameron McGonagall's Edinburgh, terrifying oh, Edinburgh God. tour. 
It's insane. So much fun. Who are some of the people that are on this season? L. Ron Hubbard. Are you talking about human beings? I meant human beings that we. Oh, know. <laughs> L. Ron Hubbard. But L. Ron Hubbard, of course, our yes. friend. Uh-huh. We always leave a cigarette burning for him. He never Here died. Here in Wolf. He never died. It's still right. And place. he never will. No. So, somewhere somebody probably always does keep a cigarette burning for L. That's, Ron that's an urban legend that I'd heard. Really? Is that, oh. Yeah, that's at the in the Scientology headquarters here. Oh. <laughs> that there's a big ashtray and they leave a cigarette burning. Oh. It's, that's. I wonder if I that's mean, true. That's, it could be or it couldn't be. That's you know what I mean? It's going to be a lot of work. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Once you start to think about the logistics of it, yeah. it's like, well, that's no, no one's doing that. Unless they manufacture like a 10 foot long cigarette <laughs> that they can at least leave all day. Do you go with the longest burning cigarette there is or the brand he smoked? Right. Because it's probably not one and the same. You're not going to look out like that. I would have, no, it's too, that's too neat. Too, too niche, clean. Too clean. Too tidy. Yeah. One thing about Scientology that doesn't add up to me is that uh, uh, Alex <laughs> Gibney, or is it Jeffrey or Lawrence Bright? <laughs> reports that uh, there are only 50,000 Scientologists worldwide. No, come on. It can't be. What? Because uh, there are more than 50,000 Scientology buildings. And there's at least that many in captivity. (laughs) (laughs) Can't be. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I have a development in this story about doing the show and you falling off the stage. Yes. You were there for that as well? I was. And I guess maybe you did receive a little heat there, Andy? A bit. Well, I stirred that up. But do you remember? <laughs> 100%. That when I, we had a, like a party, a super ego party at my place in Outwater Village. Yes. And I rented yes. these chairs, yes. 50 cents a chair from this party rental place. And I sat down next to you and it collapsed and I fell on my ass. It just immediately, like, like it wasn't there. <laughs> it was there only to make a noise, yeah. not to in any way stop me. <laughs> And I'm trying to remember what your reaction was, was because there's it's on my Instagram somewhere. So oh, find that. oh yeah, I was. I, I, there was a before and after. Well, not a before and after. There's an after and then an after. Are you helping me or are you running? Well, you're there. Neither. I'm just sitting there. Watching. Take you're an objective reporter. <laughs> and then we posed for the camera. I think. I think first I'm laughing and then we posed for the camera. All oh, right. Yeah. So well, you're vindicated a little bit. Finally, thank goodness. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> what goes around comes around. And that happened first. Yes. Oh, That's that right. happened first. Oh, yeah. no. That was karma. karma. Isn't that Whoa. interesting? That means you're next, day. I know. Whoa. Check your chair. Because <laughs> oh, chairs is, are always going out from under me. There's also this chair here with the missing armrest. Did you ever see that movie Chair Goo? Oh, yeah. What? No. <laughs> Japanese horror movie. He always sits in a chair. Chair, <laughs> chair breaks. Friend laughs. You got one week. Four years later. Four years later, you got one week. Uh, hey, and the other thing, uh, I think uh, I talked about this last time, but I've been watching a shitload of I Love Lucy. Oh. Ooh, the first oh. season, their beds, they, they have one bed. Really? They're sleeping in the really? same bed? It's when she gets pregnant that they split oh, it up. Is it- that interesting. That almost makes sense. I guess. I kind of like because it's plausible deniability. They're sleeping in one bed, but we have no reason to believe they're having sex. Now you're telling me they had sex? Split up those beds. <laughs> <laughs> well, they didn't need the beds. They didn't need the one bed anymore because mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. Oh, right, all done. Yeah. Sex yeah. had done its chore. Science. Sex delivered. had done its chore. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Wait. So hold on. Hold on. Hold on. A second. Hold on a second. Yeah, no, no, no. Who are some of the funny people we're going to hear on this we season? Lots. We do got lots. Uh, you and Jeremy Carter are back. Yeah. All, the whole Super Ego gang pops That's right. in. And, uh, and more. And more. Mary Holland. Mm-hmm. Yes. Lauren Lapkin. Lauren Lapkin. Jessica Chaffin. Mm-hmm. Sean Conroy. Betsy Sedaro. Mm-hmm. Matt Besser. Mm-hmm. Carl Tart. Jessica McKenna. Oh, my God. Uh, there's a million so more. Right? I mean, this is star-studded. Scott Ackerman. Star-studded is the word. Star-studded. Yes, yeah, Scott Ackerman. L. Ron Hubbard. <laughs> okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> Matt, what is the place that gives you joy, past or present? Uh... Uh, we have this little lounge corner in our house where Amanda and I sort of meet every morning mm-hmm. after getting out of our twin beds. <laughs> <laughs> and we have coffee, and then we watch as the cat's timed feedings goes off, and after the last feeding, the cat comes, sits down in front of my chair, stares up at me, I slow blink to her, and she jumps up on my lap, and my I put my feet up on the coffee table, and she sleeps on them over the gap like it's a bridge. You know what I mean? Are you saying oh. this is every day? Every Every day, <laughs> wow. if we're there, like we we obviously like sometimes Kong. if we have to work or whatever, we can't do it every day. But any day that we're there at after the nine o'clock feeding, she knows <laughs> there's no more feedings because oh. we do these little feedings from an automatic timer is the only way to shut her up. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> 
She and, knows there's no more feedings, nothing left yeah. to do but lie around. That's right. And so we read the newspaper and have coffee there, and it's it's heaven. That's and very it's nice. It's hard to start the day after it. Now, oh. the slow blank thing, if people don't know, yeah. this is a sign of trust yeah. that cats will give each other, give you. Yes. Um, which it's like saying, I'm I trust you enough to keep my eyes closed for longer than a blink. Yes. I'm trusting that you're not going to kill me. But Margo does it in a mean girl way where she'll blink, but then turn her head right after like, I'm done with you. (laughs) By the time she opens her eyes, she's not looking at you anymore. It's so great. Like, you're too much of a coward to try anything. (laughs) (laughs) Is this what you wanted? (laughs) Does she have her own Instagram? No, we've, we're not, uh, I mean. You've talked about it, Well, we've talked about it only in to say like, let's not do that. (laughs) You know, I mean, I just feel like, what will we post? Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. Well, you do post a fair amount of, oh, you're saying if you don't. Yeah. (laughs) What do you do? I've got nothing. (laughs) I've got nothing. I don't think that's true. Well, there's probably a picture of me flat on my ass on a chair breaking down. You can find on that. (laughs) What was the place when you were a kid that gave you joy? Oh, man. Um. Oh, God. You don't even know. Well, I used to have a fort. I had what was called a captain's bed. Do you know what that is? No. Oh, it's got drawers underneath yeah, it? Yeah. Oh, so I, I want it. I know. <laughs> it does seem like like something you'd have. Yeah, I so had a captain's it, bed. It's about, like, I'd say maybe three feet off the ground, mm-hmm. but the front of it is kind of like a, a drawers. But if yeah. you would, and it would go in the corner. So you could, like, if you pull the whole giant bed unit, I don't know, I was so small, six inches, I could squeeze behind it. Behind the so, whole GBU? Uh huh. <laughs> yes. Okay. And the drawers were, I don't know, maybe a foot deep. So there was a good probably two foot by seven foot by three foot space in there that I would decorate. And I had all my tabletop, like handheld arcade games. I kind of had my own little tabletop this arcade. This is this is a tiny little place. But not when you're, I mean, this was when I was little. So I was True. probably yeah. two feet tall myself. I don't know, two or three feet tall. I know for sure if one of my children was to hide in the drawer well of their bed between the wall and the bed, we'd be worried. Were, worried because you couldn't find him or because no, they would be like, why does she want to be in there? <laughs> well, well, what if she had set up like a little yeah, kingdom? Cool little but world, I, yeah. like, I'm a notorious recluse and that was like the first stage That's of true. just wow. got a burrow. I got a burrow. Yeah. You're venomous too. I, oh yeah. You're don't, deadly. Do not lift that bed. <laughs> One of my favorite stories about a brown reckless spider. It was some special about, like on you know National Geographic or something, about the deadliest most the deadliest insects in America or something. Yeah. They tell a story about this brown reckless spider that bit this little girl. They have to airlift her to a hospital. I I I can't remember what happens to her. Let's say that she they get her in time. She's fine. Okay. Let's please say that. But then it ends <laughs> if we're determining the, it. The story ends with Stacy Keach, who was the narrator, <laughs> saying dramatically. <laughs> The brown recluse that bit Jessica was never found. <laughs> so Be careful out there. Everyone. Yeah, still at large. <laughs> oh. 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 That, 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 that is the opposite writer. of my happy place. That <laughs> is. Yeah. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to take a break. When we return, we will have procured a location for our improv. And then we're going to do that improv. All this and nothing else when Spontaneous Nation returns. Are you tired of paying thousands of dollars to kidnappers? What a horrible parent you must be. That's your only child. On the other hand, if the kidnappers are just keeping the child and demanding money month after month, maybe you should just let the kidnappers raise your child. Children, it seems like a lot of trouble. No, thank you. This ad paid for by the console for the... Oh, welcome back. Now we have come to it. It is time for us to tell our story. We must sound our barbaric yawp across the internet. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have procured a location from a, mer- <laughs> a location from our improv. <laughs> so there's no need to do it. Everyone goes home early. <laughs> We have procured a location for our improv from Earwolf's own Shannon. What would, what would Shannon's title be? 
customer happiness rep. Yeah, yeah. Customer happiness rep. Wow. Shannon. Yeah. Well, is she, she's a customer happiness rep? Well, she represents customer I happiness. Yeah. She's, she's like in charge of that she department, right? She deals with right? the assholes. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Like the complaints. People have All a lot right. of complaints? Oh, interesting. Well, because Stitcher also handles like, like broadcast Rush Limbaugh show because it, Every podcast. Are you serious? Yeah. So if like he doesn't come in, she'll complain. <laughs> That's the complaint. The Rush Limbaugh didn't show up today. <laughs> Otherwise, just fine. <laughs> Bill Blass saying, "But please make him stop using that chair. <laughs> People think it's one of mine." <laughs> um. Well, we have procured a location from. Wait, wait I got this. The he. <laughs> Customer happiness for mid-roll, Shannon. Oh. Her, that can't be a... You, your title can't be... Customer happiness. ...an idea. It has to be like a thing. You have to be... You know what I mean? It's got to be... The like, greatest showman. <laughs> <laughs> From Earwolf's Here, Wolf Zone, greatest showman, <laughs> Shannon. <laughs> and that location is... Oh, wait a second. Mm. Before I tell you that, just so as you know, uh-huh. in order... <laughs> Thanks for paying attention. I'm listening. In order to aid us in our storytelling, we use three sound effects that move us about in space and time. Let's say we need to go into the past for some reason. Someone's having a memory. We're learning how something came to be. Anytime we travel into the past, we do so via this flashback sound effect. What is that, a tuba? But you can't stay in the past forever, folks. Oh. So anytime we want to return from a flashback, got to get back in time. Anytime we move into the future, we use this flash forward sound effect. Rocket ship. You think that? Okay. (laughs) Now, this final sound moves us only in space, not in time. Anytime we're in a scene, we want to find out what's happening at the exact same time somewhere else. Yes. We use this meanwhile button. Past. Present. Future. Everyone gets it. Woo. You seem nervous. I am a little too stupid for that. You think so? <laughs> I Three do Three buttons so. <laughs> yeah. that are different colors and labeled. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Bob, a little colorblind. And I am profoundly stupid. But here we go. And you are right up there in the Mark Evan Jackson elite squadron of people who are scared of the buttons. (laughs) I really am. It's just the two of you so far. (laughs) Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to reveal the location provided to us by greatest showman Shannon. And that location is Olympic Opening Ceremonies 2018 Pyongyang, South Korea. We take you now. To Olympic Opening Ceremonies 2018, Pyongyang, South Korea. Wonderful uniforms you guys have. Oh, you think so? Mine is just jeans and gray shirt because my country cannot compete. Uh, What country are you from? It's very clear that I am from Russia. Oh, Okay. <laughs> so clear. I don't know how it could possibly not be so clear. So you are uh, not really competing uh, for Russia. You're competing for, uh, how you say, uh, people from Russia. <laughs> O-A-R. Yeah, what's the story that you can p- complete, but you cannot complete as a Russian? Where are you from? <laughs> it's very it clear. It could not be more clear, so clear where I am from. I can't tell you how clear. <laughs> Where is it? It could not be more clear. <laughs> and what? So how does it work then? Thank you God it's on your uniform. Yeah. Which I still, I can't read your uniform. It could not be written more clearly. <laughs> <laughs> I worry that uh, we're perhaps from the same place, but... Uh, <laughs> you, I you don't are, think so. You are French? Uh, of course I am. Of course I am. Oh, wow. Oh, oh. <laughs> And you I am from French Germany. <laughs> Alsace. Yeah. Lorraine. <laughs> right. Yes, that is my name. Your name is Lorraine. My name is Lorraine. What a beautiful name. Thank you. Yeah. I am an OAR, Olympic athlete from Russia. 
So that's what they call you guys, Olympic athlete from Russia, but you're not <laughs> part of the Russian team. We Is that not, what's happening? We are not allowed to fly the flag or have the anthem. We only can have our own competition as people who have not been doped. Now this is because uh, you have a doping scandal. Well, not personally. Mm, but of course not, because you were number here. Basically. I mean, it couldn't be convicted in a court of law. Uh, listen, if you win the medal, what song are they going to sing if they can't sing the Russian national anthem? That's the great part. You get to choose. You get to choose your own song? That's, That's right. fantastic. What are you going to choose? The Russian national anthem. Oh. <laughs> but that seems like maybe the one thing you can't choose. Do you uh, know what I would choose? What? is a happy birthday to really stick it to Mildred and Betty Hill. I know. They, you really have a thing for them. I cannot, I cannot stand them. How's that going to stick it to them? To have, send them a check? <laughs> Don't you think they're going to get paid? Is it, how you say, public domain now? Oh. Anyone can hey. sing it. Is that true? I heard it was true and then I heard it wasn't true. And just Well, let's safe. find out. Let's sing it together. <laughs> Oh, he's a jolly good fellow. He's a coward. <laughs> I'm too scared. I won't even at a private party sing a happy birthday because you never know who's lurking in the bushes. <laughs> I want one time work at TGI Fridays. Yeah. TGI Fruscasts. <laughs> and uh, we sing a happy birthday there, but different version. Oh, really? What was that like? <laughs> no kidding. You say it's your birthday. Let me go get yes. Igor and Svetlana and Gregor. It's my yes. 90th birthday. 90th? I, I eat yogurt every day. I was on television commercial. For today, this restaurant is called Thank God It's His Birthday. <laughs> one more, one last time. Gregor, Svetlana, Igor, come, we're going to sing happy birthday, royalty oh, free. happy birthday, okay. This is the worst part of any job. I like it, it's a little break from the day. It drives me crazy. Remember, we cannot sing happy birthday from Mildred and Petty Hill. We have to sing pre-approved royalty free TGI Friday version that we all know very well. Yes, oh. we all know it, sing it in perfect unison, of always. Course. Yes. Of course. Okay. Are you ready? Ready! Yes. Hit me with the old pitch pipe. <laughs> I'm up here. I'm singing up here. Happy birthday! Thank you for coming. <laughs> this is a wonderful tribute. So, that's how I got to the Olympic. What? That's how I got to the... Oh. <laughs> oh, I thought you pressed the wrong one. <laughs> ah, I was right to be afraid of the buttons. Why? Huh? You're afraid of the buttons on my... Uh, yes, I'm afraid official... of the buttons on your uh, outfit there from France. It's too why, many buttons. Why did you wait until now to tell me? <laughs> because... <laughs> A full five minutes has passed. I know. I was trying to be strong. What are your face names? Of the buttons. Uh, My yeah. name is René. René, what is your name? My name is Glornsk. <laughs> <laughs> here, come here. Before we march out in opening ceremonies, I have a little vial of juice for you to drink. What kind uh, of juice? What kind of juice? Uh, let's say apple. I like uh, apple, de pomme. De pomme. Juice de pomme. Just the pump. This is clear apple juice, so don't worry, it has no additive colors or anything like that. And you'll drink it with a syringe in your arm. I have spent my entire life only training in my event and have very little knowledge of the world. And I was given a list of things to steer clear of. And I wonder if the juice from a competing athlete administered through a needle was on the list. Uh, uh, forgive me. Uh, yeah. What was your event again? Uh, my event is running in the snow. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you Russian. Uh, what is your event again? Shooting in the snow. Shooting in the snow. Yes. What is yours? I do the event where you run in the snow, oh. then you stop and shoot in the snow, oh. then you have to run again. Is it a biathlon or a triathlon? You can't run in twice? It's a dodathlon. Dodathlon. It's 12 times you do these things oh, over and over again. You're going to need my juice. Trust me, this stuff no show up anywhere. Uh, hey. Let me confer with my friend. Okay, I come with you. Well, no, that's oh. not... I thought you might need counsel. No, like I got it. I'm afraid he tried to talk you out of it. Okay, I stay here. But listen, if it's just going to be the two of us, can you put a hand over the buttons? 
because I felt a little more comfortable with a third here to protect me. I will. Uh, I'll put on my shawl. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Here we go. Terrified of the Spartans. Uh, Gornsk. Was that your name? Gornsk. Gornsk. Yes, Rene. Was that your name? That is my name. Ah. Anyway. <laughs> I am, uh, how you say, concerned uh, about this juice. Yeah. It seems like a trap, no? A trap in what sort of a way? Because I can think of many different ways it could be a trap. Maybe what? it will simply kill us. This Russian fellow, why does he offer us the juice? Why does he not take the juice himself? Ah, well, maybe it is because he is a traitor to his nation and he wants us to do well. <laughs> we can't rule it out. Sure, that's true. We cannot rule it out. Here's what we'll do. Just if you're concerned. I am. We will both take the juice. That's what we'll do. <laughs> How does this uh, address the concern? Well, because it's not like one of us will take it and the other one will get into troubles and the other one will be able to say, ha ha. We will both be in the same boat and we will rise and fall together. Airtight. Excuse me. Ah, uh, yes. What was your name again? Uh, my name is uh, Lorraine. Lorraine, of course. How could I forget sweet Lorraine? That's a beautiful name. Uh, uh, I am, of course, yeah. uh, Rene. Rene. And this is... Uh, I continue to be Glorsk. Uh, Glorsk and I have uh, discussed your offer, and uh, we say yes. Give us this juice. Great, great. Uh, don't worry about the thing, okay? And do you take the juice as well? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I already have. I just give you this because I got leftover. It's the spirit of uh, brotherhood and community for the Olympics. Share and share alike. You know, all that. And yeah, let me just leave it at that. Yeah. Okay, ready? Oh, roll all up right. your sleeves. Roll up your Here parkas. Here we go. I got my arm out. Ready for this juice? Okay. Yeah. That's, oh, I get the bubbles licking out of the, the bubble. Yeah. Here we go. He knows what he's doing. That's Into really good. Arm like a little airplane. Yeah. Say, ah, it's a little pinch. Your veins are perfect. Yeah. Look at all those okay. beautiful Thank veins. You. Those are veins of an athlete. You Choo-choo. better shoot it into my leg because uh, that's the only part of me that I use, really. I, I don't have any veins or muscles. This is very from the leg. It's uh, simply, I don't do no shooting. It's just run in the snow. So from uh, the waist up, just no veins. There's no veins up there. I ha- well, no visible veins. I had them redirected to the legs. <laughs> You're so- very Vascular legs. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So when you're at the, the pumps of blood, yes. Uh, what's the route it takes? <laughs> it's down to the legs and back up to the heart. <laughs> With a minimal amount up to the brain just to operate the legs. Here you go. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, now I should mention they're drug testing today. Uh, yeah. In about, uh, I don't know, five minutes. Just a lore. Well, that's not going to be a problem because this was only juice. Juice is yeah, hardly a drug. If you test positive, don't yeah. worry. This is not the reason why. <laughs> oh, what okay. would be the reason why? Yeah, what would be the reason? I don't know. Are you guys juicing? Ju- may, I, may I confer with my friend a moment? I'll come with you. Please. No. no. Why? <laughs> Lorraine, please. Right. Give your this hand. The buttons again. The buttons again, please. The buttons. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> please hide the buttons. <laughs> Let me put on my poncho. <laughs> yeah. Glorst. Glonsk. 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 Forgive me, I'm thinking of some furniture I assembled earlier today in the village. Why did they not supply us with our own furniture? I, I don't know. It's infuriating. And I mean, I did came here with my own Allen wrench. Thank God. <laughs> yes, they gave us uh, IKEA gift cards. They said, go nuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have a lot of time. <laughs> okay, okay, Lorraine. Okay. All anyway, your horses. Yes, it's crazy. But yes, what? I feel this Lorraine. Uh-huh. He has dubbed us with the dope. Yeah. Uh, so what? What? Well, if there's a drug test in five minutes, yes, we're well, not going to pass. No, of course we're going to pass. Don't worry about it. I will provide your urine sample, and you will provide okay, mine. Okay. Okay. You see, it is the Glanced. perfect plan. All done. That second. way, we will. I want you to think about this for just one more second, <laughs> okay. and maybe you'll see the fatal flaw. You're concerned. You're gonna flunk. The drug test. So I will give you my urine sample. I'm concerned I'm going to flunk the drug test, so you give me your urine right. sample. No, no, no. I'm clear. And together we both <laughs> flunk it just fine. Uh, so you... <laughs> you you are worried my concern is that it maybe won't flunk the test? Well, I do. are you concerned you're not going to get an accurate test on the blood? The urine? 
Look, everything's going to be fine. I'm worried I'm not going to get to uh, run and shoot and run and shoot. Oh, oh, I see. Now I see your concern. <laughs> yes, I want to be in the you Olympics. You want to be in the Olympics. See, I'm I'm really here to try and escape. When I run into that snow, I'm just going to keep running and try to escape. Where are you trying to escape from? I'm from, the, from my life as an athlete in uh, French Germany. There is simply, I have been bred from birth to be a snow runner. He says so. Yes. From birth, you from say. From birth. Mama, give me the baby. Here is the baby. Go out in the snow. Run. Run, baby, run. No. <laughs> He's trying to speak. Why is the baby not <laughs> Running. Because it is concerned with speaking. Shut up and run. Run, baby. Schnell, schnell. Schnell. Throw the baby in the snow. Ah, good idea. And by some miracle, I ran. I ran as a baby through the snow. Luckily, it wasn't a lot of snow. It's very uh, Forrest Gump, wouldn't you say? Uh, I don't know. Not familiar. I have not seen any movies, television shows, or music. I have seen no music. In all of the time that I have simply been training to be a snow runner, there has been no other life for me. I really have to go soon. Okay, look, we we cannot keep this fellow at bay forever. Yes. We will have to go and uh, submit to this drug test. Uh, okay. Well, what's, uh, what can we possibly do? I know. I have the perfect plan. When the person comes to, oh boy. to test us, mm-hmm. we will punch them in the face. That's actually a better plan than the other one with the urine. All right, so uh, if you want to escape, yes, yes, maybe you do the punching. I will punch, and then I will be the hero. Ah, I will say, "Oh no, he got away." I'm helping you. You just got punched, so make it a good punch. It's going to be a good uh, punch with my knee. So then, that's a kick, or a knee, really. Oh, I think I, it's not a knee punch. I've never heard that term, but uh, we are from different places. Yeah, I'm going to do a knee punch. Are right, you do a knee punch. Yeah, or I, an ankle punch. I see. Mm, meaning? <laughs> Wait a minute. Are yeah. you going to punch this fellow in the knee or the ankle? Oh, or it's very hard to, to get s- my knee to his face. Yeah, I'm going to punch him knee to knee punch. You're, you're just going to ram your knee into his knee. <laughs> I'm going to knee punch him in the knee. Why don't you? <laughs> How about this? Yeah. That's Vidania! All right, well, Lorraine, wait, 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 hold on a second. I'm going to kneel down behind this drug tester. Okay, okay. You shove him over, make a big deal out of okay, it. Okay, okay. I pretend to be uh, fixing my running boot. Yes, yes, yes. Then you run away. Yes. You escape. I but escape into the I hills st- of South Korea. I stay and help. I stay and help the drug tester. Uh, I'm the hero to him. I get to stay in the Olympics, which I want to do. Okay, okay. And he doesn't do the drug test on me. It is a perfect plan. It's a, I cannot think of a way it will go wrong. No, it cannot fail. Lorraine, here we are. Yes? We are ready for the drug test. Where do we go? He will come to you. When does this happen? Right now. Oh. oh. Hello. I'm drug testing from New Zealand. Vice. <laughs> Drug test, juicing human growth hormone. Oh. And I'm going to need to take tests of all of you. Right, one moment. I have to uh, just walk behind you very briefly to inspect my running snow boot. There's nothing in the rules against this. That's right. And <laughs> here comes a flurry of knee and oh. ankle punches. Oh. Knee punch, oh. knee punch, ankle punch, uh. ankle punch, uh. ankle punch, uh. knee push punch. Him. Just oh. push him. What? Just push him. <laughs> I'm still standing. <laughs> oh, all right. Push! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Are you all right, drug tester from New Zealand? What is he? Oh no, he's running away, this culprit. I'd better go and catch him. No, no? S- stay here stay. and I will help me. I will tend to your wounds. You maybe uh, have a concussion, you know. You saved me. I can't thank you did enough. I? I don't think You're I did. a hero. Uh, no, I'm not a hero. You're I'm totally just... a hero. <laughs> I mean, totally. Unequivocally, entirely, and completely a hero. Well, if you say so. Oh, no. Look at the time. I must get to my event. Oh, I tr- there's no way. You have been doping. You're free to go. Oh, are you sure? Because uh, I don't mind pissing in a <laughs> little vial for you. <laughs> no, that won't be necessary. You should go to the medic and have yourself checked out. <laughs> I think I'm heaving a straw. <laughs> you might be. I- 
Oh yeah, every once in a while, someone will come to my mountain cave here in South Korea and uh, visit me. You're only the most recent uh, mountain climbers to make it all the way up to my cave. Hello. I say, how long have you been here? I've been here since the opening ceremonies of the 2018 Olympics. The 2018 Olympics? What? That was at least 40-some years ago. 40-some years ago? What year is it now, if in fact you're still measuring years? It's 2058, don't you know? I say, what's your story, old man? Well, I <laughs> was uh, juiced up and escaped <gasps> into oh. the hills, and that juice ha- has uh, allowed me to go on uh, living without eating anything <laughs> in 40 years. Uh, pardon me, old boy. Do you mind if I confer with my associate? <laughs> no, no problem at all. Yes, old boy? Leslie? Yes? Ravone? <laughs> Leslie, Leslie, old shoe, I believe this is glanced. You don't mean the, the disappearing ger- athlete from yes. the, the uh, Pyongyang Olympics? Y- yes, the very same, the disgraced German snow runner. They quit and stopped the Olympics totally after that. It was yes. such a scandal. He took the fun out of it. I mean, he basically killed that poor New Zealand chap with the troubled accent. That's right. <laughs> The troubles went straight to his brain. Oh, poor lad. Well, I think it's our duty, as good British citizens, to run him in. Yes, we shall do this for... Queen... (laughs) Queen Suits. Who? You know. Suits? Yes, uh, King Harry and uh, Queen Meghan's (laughs) little daughter. Oh, Queen Suits. Queen Suits, they named the Suits after the television program. Oh, (laughs) I'd forgotten what a cultural phenom that she had become. Everybody loves suits. Do you have your hand in cuffs? Well, of course I do. I never travel anywhere without them. And I've got a trowel we can beat him silly with. (laughs) But first the handcuffs, then the trowel. Right, and a truncheon. That's what I meant. I'm also a mason. (laughs) I say, how about this? Build a brick wall around him? We handcuff him. We truncheon him. We trowel him into a bricking wall. And then we see if he wants to be a mason. And then we say, if you want to be a mason, ask a mason. And then the answer, of course, is practice, practice, practice. Carnegie Hall. Location, location, location. Real estate. I say! Uh, Hello! Yes, are you done with your conference? Uh, Yes, uh, uh, pardon me, German immortal man. Uh, German, French. Uh, French, German, in point of fact. French, German, yes, yes, yes. Uh, I say, but... Uh, settle a bet for us. We have a little wager. Uh, uh-huh. They say that uh, if your wrists are bigger than your neck, you have cancer. If your wrists are bigger than your neck. So what am I meant to do then? Well, just to hold, hold my wrists. Wrist. Hold your wrists up. Not grasping mm. it. They say if your wrists yes. are smaller due to no veins in them and yes. all of them down below. That's that the case with cancer. my body. Yes, then, right. you, then you have cancer? Yes, oh, guys, this is look. terrible. You came here to tell me I have cancer? Well, we came to find oh, out yes. if you do. We can't oh. tell you until we see. How am I meant to show you again? Hold and them up. Stick and out your wrists. And yes. put them in these handcuffs. <laughs> yes. Measuring oh. devices. These are cancer measuring devices? Yes. Yes, the they cancer measure caliper. the cancer. Yeah. All right, Cancerpers. Well, I can't wait to find out. Here you go. These are those spindly little wrists which receive no yes, blood. Yeah. Click. Oh, we each put one on each hand. That won't do anything. Oh, no. We forgot. <laughs> Can we link the... You we, know what they say. What? If you have handcuffs on your wrists... On your wrists. Yes. And if, uh, if, and they're, it, disconnected, if they're disconnected, you have cancer. You have cancer. And the only cure for You're cancer is I'm to connect, connect handcuffs. Them. Yes. How, what do you mean? Just hold, just hold. I'm yes, yes. prepared to do whatever it takes. Yes. Because my life here on top of this snow mountain is so precious. <laughs> Luckily, whatever it takes is just standing there and maybe shutting up. <laughs> well, I'll try. All right. <laughs> Click, click, click. Wow, there's so much room between these two handcuffs that really doesn't serve a purpose, does it? <sighs> well. Handcuffs, didn't you say they were cancer detecting wrist? Yes, we that's said a Latin all, term. Yes, we said all sorts of things. Didn't we? Didn't you say that you would run through snow in the Olympics? Oh, yeah, but I was always intending to escape. 
Oh, no. No, we've, you see, we, you've got to come with us or else you have cancer. <laughs> well, as I said, I've uh, said many times, I understand virtually nothing of the world, having been raised as a snow runner and then living reclusively in a snow cave at the top of a mountain. I am simply not in a position to argue with what does sound like an odd proposition. Well, but here we go. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you want cancer? <gasps> Absolutely Scandalous. not. Let's go take him to the International Olympics Committee. Retired. Hey, <laughs> You call him Dr. Jones, dog? Who stands before this committee? Why, no one's come in here in 40-some years. I was asleep. <laughs> well... It is I, Glonsk. Just, Glonsk. Glonsk. Just trying to avoid cancer. You. Huh? We never thought we'd see you again. You're yes. the reason the Olympics have been dead for 40 some years. Stop doing the Olympics altogether because I ran away. You ruined it. People oh. were so sad. Well, but really, let me ask you this seriously now. No. What has been the negative effect of not having the Olympics? <laughs> well, um, uh, no. Um, the trash industry has suffered. Uh, we don't get a lot of quippy commercials. Um, the population has gone down oh, since people pins. aren't having sex in the Olympic Village. That's right. Trading, trading pins, pins, that's yes. a big one. Oh, drone firework shows. Uh, there have been fewer of them? Yes. Oh, uh, God. Uh, uh, people mm. that make cards that are flipped over to form a pattern, they've all gone out of business. And general goodwill has been on downturn ever since. Well, none of that sounds like such a big deal. Uh, so I don't have any regrets. Who are you to judge? We hereby give you cancer. <laughs> Oh, it was the very thing I had come here to avoid. <laughs> what a disaster. I just heard you'd brought him to the committee. My word, look who it is. <gasps> That's him, all right. I'd noticed the men that pushed me over another men any time, and he ran into the hills like a glorious snow runner. I can confirm he's the reason the Olympics stopped. Can it Sorry, be? ceased. Oh. Can it be? Huh? Glance, this is you. Oh, my goodness. It is me, Renee. Renee. I will never forget that time. Look at your buttons have only become larger in the years. <laughs> it is because I have, you say, shrunk. I am smaller. You are smaller, but the buttons are the same size. The juice had a different effect on me than it did on you, old what friend. What did the juice do to you? It made me a little guy. Shoo! <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Isn't that weird? You just shrank up. Listen. Your honors, I must uh, say, this man does not deserve cancer. It was my idea to push the New Zealander over my back and uh, make me the hero. If you're going to give anyone cancer, give it to me. Well, also, I might already have it because I smoke like a chimney. Well, let us confer a yeah, little bit of it. Yeah. Uh, okay. What do you think? Just cancer for everybody? I or? don't know whether to give everyone cancer or just put the Olympics back on. Ooh. So, uh, Rene, how'd you do while they're conferring over there? How'd you do in your event uh, after all? I, uh, I didn't meddle. Um, oh, okay. okay. Yeah, I, yeah. I, uh, I started to shrink almost immediately. Oh, really? It started right away. Yeah, and I, I ran right out of my boots. Oh. I'm still listening. Hey, guys, how are you doing? <laughs> oh, my Lorraine. God. Yes, it is Lorraine. You look exactly the same. Well, uh, I've been taking a little something. Oh. Who is that man there? Who is that man? You've caught me dead to rights. <gasps> And no he, one did anything. Uh, <laughs> I know when they I'm, literally just turned around no, from their conference. Yeah, I know when I'm beat. Question. Nope. <laughs> you got me. I know when I'm beat. Your honors, this is Lorraine. He gave us the juice. Uh, and uh, he is uh, the original sinner here. I only gave him the juice because I was given the juice. Ah, I'm French now. <laughs> Yo, what happened to you? It doesn't matter, really. It's the juice. It's the juice. <laughs> the juice is yeah, 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 it's the juice. It's the stupid fucking Olympic. <laughs> All right. Here is what we're going to do. Mm. 
We have one batch of cancer left. <laughs> There's just one single serving of cancer. <laughs> Glonsk, you don't seem like you deserve it. Thank you. You never wanted to be in the Olympics in the first place. No, I didn't. I only was a good runner as a baby. <laughs> Renee, that sounds like a woman's name. I won't hit a woman, and I'm not about to start by giving them cancer. Vive le Renee! Lorraine? All this Shit, time later, people woman's... still aren't hitting women? Oh. <laughs> That's an interesting, uh, uh, interesting stance to take. Yeah, cancer back to you. <laughs> you L- 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 you're free to go, old boy. Glance back to your cavern and enjoy your cancer. So rules the Olympic. Wait a minute, community. what happened? You Goodbye, got cancer. You got cancer. Oh, it just seemed like an old chivalrous thing, you know. Shouldn't we all punch each other with our knees? No. What, what are you talking? <laughs> Why? Why would you want more punching? The idea is less punching. I'm just saying, if your policy is I'll never hit a woman, isn't it sexist? Oh, I'm so glad you have cancer. And it all happened in a place called Spontanea Nation. (laughs) Andy Daly! Oh! Where can people find you should they wish to find you and should you wish to be found? Oh, Oh. nowhere. (laughs) I don't don't want to be found. I'm just lying on my bed with my pillow, taking it easy. (laughs) <laughs> TV's Andy Daly. TV's Andy Daly. Um, do you have any other projects coming up that you'd like to talk about? Oh, um, no. Hey, okay. Matt Gorley. <laughs> you can find me on Instagram at Matt Gorley, and you can help solve the mystery of what happened with the collapsed chair, because I don't want to look that far back. Let us know. And, I'll uh, find the pictures. Okay. I'll, I'll post. I, I will. You know what? I'm going to make a note to myself right now. Okay. Do it now. This will be interesting to I'll see what I'll make a note to happened. myself. Well, I mean, you're just going to see. I remember the picture. Yeah. And there's, there's a picture of you sitting on a broken chair. Yeah. And me sitting next to you. And I'm laughing. But I, I, is it a laugh? Like, like I just want to know if it connotes whether you're going to help next or just keep laughing. Well, there wasn't much to do because it's not, you didn't go anywhere. <laughs> you just you just went down and then you started laughing. Yeah. So, you know, it yeah, was we'll not, we'll you know, this did not take place on a cliff. You can couch it however you like. You can, you know. Oh, now it's a couch. <laughs> okay, Paul. Okay, Paul Bunyan. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll, I'll to do the note after. Uh, remind me to do the note. So, uh, I'll, I'll make a note to remind you to do the note. Matt, what would you like to promote? Uh, just listen to that Andy Daly podcast pilot. It is going to be worth your time and money, and it'll also hit the free airwaves of Earwolf on September oh, yeah. 1st. September there, the 1st. There you go, guys. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cheap skates. Good news, cheap skates. Oh, and, <laughs> and what about Pistol Shrimps? When's Pistol Shrimps coming back? Probably around this time. And it's also worth mentioning that yes. there's a live Andy Daly show uh-huh. at Largo on April 2nd. Oh, shit. And we'll all be there. That's right. Yes, the three of us will be there. And, and we can Mar- reveal what that show will be, right? Absolutely. If it's March. <laughs> if it's March. Keep questioning as Mark. This will be the Travel Bug Live with August Lint. That's right. And special guests. And is it is it a whole reunion from last time? That's the plan. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> so this is gonna be the three of us. It's gonna be Matt Besser as, yes. the, as Pope Benedict. Yeah. Still alive. <laughs> uh Aaron Hayes. Uh-huh. As August Lint's estranged wife. Yeah. Chris Tallman. As his children's new papa. And boss. Yes. And, and boss. At the pretzel factory. At the pretzel factory. And I will be playing Werner Herzog, and Matt will be playing H.R. Giger. That's right. This oh. is going to be a lot of it's fun. And it'll also great. have the German rock band Spirit from last <laughs> That's season right. two. Yes. That's right. That's right. German hard rock. A rare live performance by uh, Spirit. Where can people find tickets for this? Largo-LA.com. Oh. You know more than me. No, that's it. That's the extent (laughs) of my knowledge that I have over you. I can't wait for that. Ladies and gentlemen, Edmund Schletter. Thank you, Maestro. He is Edmund Schletter on all the things. If you want to find out about Edmund Schletter's non-spontaneous nation work, go to EdmundSchletter.com. How do you spell Edmund Schletter? Why, it's easy. It goes a little something like this. (laughs) E-B-A-N-S-C-H-L-E-T-T-E-R. As for me, go to paulftompkins.com slash live to see my live shows where I'm going to be. Follow me at P.F. Tompkins on all the socials. And maybe I'll be saying something funny, singing a song about license plates. Maybe I'll be mad about guns. Who knows? Thank you to Engineer Ryan for engineering us all the way to the end of the show, which this is. Goodbye forever. Until next week, this is Paul F. Tompkins saying, Semper in Presenti. Thank you. 
Thanks once again to Mack Weldon for sponsoring today's show. Mack Weldon is a men's essentials brand that believes in smart design, premium fabrics, and simple shopping. They even have a line of silver underwear and shirts that are naturally antimicrobial. They want you to be comfortable, so if you don't like your first pair, you can keep it, and they will still refund you, no questions asked. So go to MacWeldon.com and get 20% off using promo code PFT. That is MacWeldon.com, 20% off using promo code PFT. Whatever you're wearing right now, Mac Weldon is better. This has been an Ill Wolf production. Executive producers Scott Ackerman, Chris Bannon, Colin Anderson, and Paul F. Tompkins. For more media and content, go to earwolf.com. <laughs>